Welcome back to Wildcast, guys. Hope y'all doing well out there. I'm your host, Rod, as always. And in this video, we're going to be talking about a trial date being set for Donald Trump's hush money trial, criminal trial in New York for March 25th. So the judge in this case, Judge Merchant or Merchant, however you pronounce it, Judge Merchant has dismissed all of the motions to dismiss that Donald Trump's side brought to basically get rid of this case. They argued that today. Um, the main argument they presented, there are two arguments they presented. One uh, is an argument from politics, and the other one was an argument from uh, election, uh, election schedule and also the trial schedule. They were trying to claim that this trial, the March 25th date that the judge set today, would conflict with other trials and proceedings that are going on, but that's a complete lie because there are no trials scheduled in any of the other cases. And that's because of Donald Trump's own actions. There would be a trial going on next month uh, if the D.C. case went forward, but he decided to appeal it up to the Supreme Court. So that the, so that, that case may be delayed uh, slightly as well, maybe a month or two, depending on how the Supreme Court um, rules on and when they rule on it. Okay? They're definitely going to rule against Trump. It's just a matter of when they whether they take up the case and when they rule. So there are there's nothing. And of course, in Georgia, we have the family Annie Willis drama going on right now. We don't know when that will be resolved. Most likely quickly within uh, next month, we should be back on track. Whether she's gone or not, the case will continue against Trump, as I said in my last video. Uh, but either way, there are no other trials on the calendar. So the judge uh, had no reason to uh, delay. And uh, Trump side, of course, is trying to delay everything and they failed. And the trial date has been set. OK, so uh, we're going to be using reporting from CBS News here. We're going to be talking about what's, what went on inside. And uh, as they're reporting here, Trump's first criminal trial set to begin March 25th as judge denies bid to dismiss hush money case. The first criminal trial against a former president in U.S. history will begin on March 25th with jury selection in the Manhattan District Attorney's case against Donald Trump. Uh, a New York judge ruled Thursday denying Trump's bid to dismiss the charges against him. So we're going to look at the uh, look at the details here. But I want to I want to address one thing really fast before we begin uh, some legal misinformation that's been spread even by mainstream uh, sources like CNN and MSNBC, stupid analysts who've come on and, and basically tried to contradict Alvin Bragg and his charging decisions and Trump himself alluded to this. That's why I'm covering this and want to explain this as the first thing, because I've been, I've been annoyed by this for a long time. And this is a great time to clear things up for you guys, because I'm sure you guys have been wondering too. So there have been, there have been some challenges by stupid people who don't understand New York law to uh, Alvin Bragg charging these 34 charges, these falsifying uh, business documents charges, which is what he's been hit with mostly. And uh, people have been saying that these are normally charged as misdemeanors and therefore they're lower level offenses, which that's true. And Trump himself capitalized on this. He came out to the to this area over here. I'm not going to show you the video because I don't want to give him any attention. But basically what he said was that these are uh, some legal scholars have said that these are even crimes. And basically what he was referring to is that the fact that these are usually charged as misdemeanors, which he assume, he thinks he's an idiot, of course, doesn't know anything about the law. Mister, people are uh, convicted on misdemeanors all the time, and if they're repeat offenders, they go to prison. Okay, so this happens every day. Business people, accountants mainly, and corporate accountants and corporate CEOs even are hit with falsifying documents every day. Okay, every month there are trials in state courts for uh, corporate crimes. Okay, you never hear about them because the media doesn't cover them. So people get the idea that rich people get get off scot free. That's not true. Rich people are prosecuted all the time. And he's being prosecuted on these uh, charges as well as he should be. So even if they were uh, being charged as misdemeanors, they should still be charged. There should still be charges against him. But people have argued that Alvin Bragg is using a novel legal theory, which he's not. OK, he, uh, the, the, the what's basically happened here is that normally falsifying business records will be charged as a misdemeanor. A misdemeanor and a, and a, uh, a felony differs because misdemeanors carry much less prison time and uh, uh, and uh, judges give less prison time for misdemeanors and they're lower level crimes. OK, uh, now what. Trump has been charged with because of the fact that these the falsifying business records have been charged as a felony instead of a misdemeanor. He's looking uh, at basically four years for each charge. Okay, he's looking at uh, a lot of prison time if he gets the max. He's not going to get the max, but he he may actually get some prison time here, even though it's a first offense, just because of the uh, the numerous number of charges. And but that's up to the judge. Okay, so we're not going to talk about sentencing here now, but I want to finish this off. So even if they were charged as misdemeanors. Trump still should be prosecuted. Even if he doesn't get any prison time, he should still be convicted on the misdemeanors because a misdemeanor is still a criminal offense. OK, the fact that it carries lower level uh, prison time does not mean that it should not be charged. So his contention that he didn't do anything wrong 
because these are usually charged as uh, misdemeanors is ridiculous. Misdemeanors are still crimes. This monkey over here hasn't figured that out. And a lot of stupid people on CNN and MSNBC haven't figured that out either because they think that these are weak. This is a weak case just because it's a misdemeanor. No, just because there aren't, there isn't as much prison time in question. Like in the DC case, he can get like 20 years in prison or uh, he's facing way more, but he can realistically be sentenced to like 20 years in the election interference case by Jack Smith. Okay. Here it's much less time, but nevertheless, even if it was no time, I still want him prosecuted, even if he was charged as a misdemeanor. OK, here he was charged as a felon, a low level felon, because the district attorney's office uh, arose the level uh, of the charge from a misdemeanor to a low level uh, felony uh, because of the fact that it was uh, in coordination with the second crime. So as he explains here, it rises to a felony, which uh, carries up to four years in behind bars if there was an intent to commit a second or conceal a second crime. OK, so that's the rationale that Bragg is using. And Bragg explained in that presser that he did after he charged Donald Trump, he came out and ex explained his position. He also he explained during that presser that Bragg said his office routinely brings felony false uh, false business records cases. And that's true. As I said, uh, corporate CEOs and their lower lackeys face these kind of charges all the time. So it's not abnormal in New York law, and that's why the judge upheld the indictment, by the way, dismissed all the motions to dismiss in this case, um, because of the fact that Bragg hasn't done anything wrong, and he's correct by the law, okay? So he was, it was perfectly fine to raise these up to a low-level felony from a misdemeanor, and Trump is wrong when he says that legal scholars have said these aren't crimes. Even misdemeanors are still crimes, even if they were charged as a misdemeanor, still a crime, okay? So th th he's facing low-level felonies, not misdemeanors. He's facing felonies, 34 felony counts in New York. <clears throat> and uh, we all know the details of this. This has to do with the uh, money that he gave to uh, Daniels through Michael Cohen. Okay. We'll talk about uh, the credibility of Michael Cohen and whether he's going to be convicted. What are the chances, all that in the end of the video, but let's now jump uh, to what happened in the courtroom. So hopefully that's clear because I want to clear this b BS up that the media has uh, uh, perpetrated basically on us. Uh, False, falsely claiming that Bragg's charging decision was somehow flawed. It was not. The New York law supports him, and that's why the judge rejected all of their uh, motions to dismiss, uh, dismiss. I believe one of the claims that they made was this argument that these should not be charged as felonies, and the judge rejected all of their motions to dismiss. And that, that would not be grounds to dismiss the case, by the way, but, but that's why they lost, because they had no solid grounds. But during the hearing, they didn't even bring that up. They were talking about political problems and election interference. They weren't actually talking about uh, th this this argument that was presented by the media, uh, people uh, talking heads on, on CNN were talking about how oh, these charges might be problematic. No, they're not problematic. You're dumb. You don't understand New York law. OK, so uh, so let's get to what happened during the hearing. As Trump looked on, uh, his attorney, Todd Blanche, immediately protested the decision, uh, the judge's decision to proceed to trial, saying he expected to be able to discuss timing at the hearing. Blanche, uh, one of the key members of Trump's legal team, said the decision was a, a grave injustice and pointed to the former president's various other legal entanglements. We have, quote, we have been faced with uh, compressed and expedited schedules in every one of those trials. We, meaning myself and the firm and President Trump, have been put into an impossible position. What position? You guys are the ones who decided to appeal all those other cases. You have brought that on yourself. That's not this judge's problem. The only thing judge ha the judge has to make sure is that there isn't another criminal trial happening when this one's going on. And as I explained in the beginning, because of Trump's own actions, there is no, no other trials going on against him. So it's open calendar as far as trials go in this case. And the judge doesn't have to take into account any of this whining that he's doing here. Okay, All the judge has to make sure is that there isn't a conflict with another criminal trial. So the judge said that he reached out to Judge Chutkin, talked about this. And of course, Judge Chutkin has publicly announced that she's putting the case on hold until the Supreme Court rules on this, until the immunity question is resolved. And the appeals courts have already ruled against Trump. Trump in that case, and the Supreme Court will most likely not even take up the case. But if they do, they will also rule against him. Then that then that trial will be go going on again. By that time, this trial will be over and he will most likely be convicted. But we'll talk about the uh, the chances of conviction later. Let's finish the, finish this off. Uh, Merchant set a preliminary trial date for March 25th at a hearing last May. That's last year when he after he was charged. But there had been no other public proceedings in the case since then. So they didn't even 
file motions in limine, which is what where you present your potential, uh, you know, motions to dismiss and other other reasons why this trial shouldn't happen. They didn't even do that. So all of their motions were presented today, uh, apparently. Okay. And the judge dismissed all of their uh, uh, motions in limine and every, every other argument and motion to dismiss that they made. Everything was dismissed by the judge. None of it, none of it held up. That's why the judge said after reading their documents that they're not, he's not accepting anything and you're going to trial. Okay. Trump's attorneys had sought to have the charges thrown out, arguing they were politically motivated. This is not a good argument and it never works. Okay. This is something you usually argue to a jury, not a judge. The judge is looking at questions of law and politically motivated attacks are not, uh, not ever. I've, they, I've never seen a case thrown out because the judge found it politically motivated. You can argue that to a jury during the, the facts presentation and maybe the jury will buy into your arguments. In this case, they're not going to buy it because there are paper trails to his crimes. Okay. The, the uh, Alvin Bragg has paper a document, uh, a document trail of Trump's crimes and Michael Cohen will testify to his crimes. Michael Cohen being a criminal himself, but he was directly involved in this crime here and he went to prison uh, for something related to this. Okay. So, He's uh, so Michael Cohen usually wouldn't make a good uh, witness, but given the, his proximity to Trump uh, in these in these charges, uh, he definitely will. Uh, Trump will most likely not. I don't want to say definitely. Uh, the the jury will see him as a credible person because he's a criminal just like Donald Trump. The only worse criminal than uh, the only worse criminal than Michael Cohen is Donald Trump. Okay, in this particular uh, case, because Michael Cohen also committed crimes. Okay, and I am not going easy on him, despite the fact that many people on the left uh, and uh, you know others who are anti-Trump uh, have gone easy on Michael Cohen. He's a crook and he's a piece of trash who attacks the DOJ every day. I hate Michael Cohen. I hate him, and he, nobody should be giving him airtime. <clears throat> and I know you guys know who I'm talking about. There's a certain network that has put him on as a regular. He's a criminal, and it's somebody who tries to is trying to uh, actively destroy the DOJ. I hate Michael Cohen. He's a piece of trash. So th there's my opinion of Michael Cohen on the record for you. The judge assured Blanche that his client is not going to be in more than one criminal trial at once. Judge, that's what Judge Merchant said, and said that the issues Trump's attorneys raised had been on my radar for many, many months. He said he had discussed the timing of the trial with uh, U.S. District Judge Ch uh, Tanya Chutkin, who will oversee Trump's federal prosecution in Washington, D.C., if it is allowed to proceed, which it will be. Uh, Chutkin initially set a trial date of March 4th. But the case is on hold as Trump pursues an immunity claim with the Supreme Court. So he's the one who's responsible for delaying that trial. So he can't use that now as an excuse to delay this trial. That's what he was trying to do. Use the other legal cases as an excuse to delay this one. Not going to work. OK, I'm glad that the judge didn't even give any like he just came out and said, nope. I'm not giving you any delays. I love that, okay? Because that's the that's been the name of the game for them because they're just trying to make it past the election hoping they can win. Of course they're going to lose. Joe Biden's going to kick his ass, but in a in a in a you know, politics is never predictable and in a world where he wins, we want to make sure that he's at least convicted once for the crimes that he has actually committed. <clears throat> Once it became clear that Merchant would not delay the trial, Blanche and uh, and Blanche and the prosecutor Joshua uh, Steinglass debated the uh, questions that would be posted to uh, the jurors, the potential jury pool. Most of the questions related to what news outlets they consume. That's normal questions you ask in a trial like this when political figures are involved. Whether they belong to any fringe groups like Antifa or the Proud Boys. Reasonable questions to ask that might indicate their bias against either party. Uh, Antifa people being more prosecution friendly uh, in this case because they hate Trump and Proud Boys people being more uh, Trump friendly and election deniers. The question of election denialism also came up. Prosecutors acknowledged that se uh, several questions were taken directly from the jury selection process in the defamation trial against Trump brought by E. Jean Carroll. Makes sense because um those questions, the, the, Trump is on trial here again. Okay, This is a criminal trial. That was a civil trial. But nevertheless, similar questions should definitely be asked here from the jury pool to exclude biased people from either side. We don't we want people who are rational and willing to look at the evidence and be fair against both sides. That's what I want in a trial. Despite however much I might think that Trump is guilty, I want the jurors to be fair minded. One such question was, do you believe that the 2020 election was stolen? Steinglass argued that an answer in the affirmative would indicate an unwillingness to follow the facts and the kind of kind of just blindly follow what Trump says. That's absolutely true. Uh, Blanche argued that what what they all want to know, Blanche, who's the who's the Trump attorney, argued that what they all want to know is 
do you like President Trump? That's what he's, he was trying to say. But then the uh, the prosecutor came back and said, we are not interested in whether people like or dislike President Trump. We are interested in whether they can be fair or unfair. And that's absolutely true. And that question will be allowed, by the way. Uh, they will be asking that question. The judge will allow that question to be asked. As the hearing wrapped up, Blanche told the judge that the fact that the president that President Trump is now going to spend the next two months working on this trial instead of campaigning is something that shouldn't happen in this country. Why not? I don't give a damn. And the judge doesn't and the law doesn't give a damn about your stupid pol political arguments. OK, if you're having pro uh, campaign problems, that's a you problem, son. OK, the judge's job is to administer the law and to have a fair trial. We don't give a damn about what your uh, what your client is doing in a person in your personal life. OK, they're trying to get some cachet out of the fact that he's winning the primaries against Nikki Haley, who's an uh, unknown character of as far as the country goes. And nobody cares about her. And the fact that he's beating her means nothing. And, and he only won by. 54 percent or something in iowa which is embarrassing he should be winning by like 90 percent given how much power he claims to have over the gop uh, but nevertheless those are all political problems that the judge cannot be concerned with okay the fact that you got your your criminal client decided to run for president again is not the judge's business and he doesn't give a damn about that <clears throat> the judge responded with the following What's your legal argument? That is not a legal argument. So that meaning that this this crap about him running for president has nothing to do with the law. And that's why he's saying that's not a legal argument. That's just a political argument. And the judge can't care about that. He was asking, what's your legal argument? And curiously, um, the Bl Blanche, the Trump attorney, never talked anything about this, about how, ooh, Alvin Bragg wrongfully charged my client with a, with a felony, low-level felony instead of a misdemeanor, because it's not a valid argument, and he already embarrassed himself, so Blanche didn't even bother being, bringing up this stupid argument, which the media has been pushing since Donald Trump was indicted la uh, to, uh, last year, right, when he was indicted. So he had no arguments. There, there are no arguments. The charges are valid. Donald Trump did exactly what Michael Cohen and other people said. Okay, Whether you like Michael Cohen or not, in this case, he has credibility because he was there when, when Donald Trump was committing these crimes. He was part of the crimes. Okay, He's a crook himself. So uh, the judge said that what, what he said regarding having to run for president, that's your problem, bro, and you don't have any legal arguments. He went on to say, I'll see you on March 25th. So I love the judge here. He's not taking any crap uh, from anything and from anybody. And I like that. So let's now talk about the probability of Trump being convicted here. Now, it is certainly true that this case presents more of a challenge because the jury is looking at Basically, the uh, the w ma the main witness here is going to be Michael Cohen. There are going to be other people like financial experts and people who are going to be put on by the prosecutors. But mainly, it's going to be Trump versus Cohen here because he's the key witness. He's going to be one of the key witnesses. I don't know what other witnesses they'll pres uh, Alvin Bragg will present, so I'll have to wait and see. But as far as I can see, it will be Michael Cohen's uh, credibility versus Donald Trump's credibility. That's what the jury will be looking at. And certainly, Michael Cohen has problems. As I said, I don't like him. I think he's a piece of trash and a criminal. But nevertheless, uh, the jury will understand when the prosecution explains to them that Michael Cohen was there and has credibility and what he has to say matters here because he is going to be giving evidence on an even bigger criminal, the criminal mastermind behind this whole uh, this whole uh, Stormy Daniels hush money deal, which is Donald Trump. So, he, so prosecutors use lower level criminals to testify against higher level criminals all the time. And the juries understand that Given the fact that all these people are criminals, the people who are going to be testifying against the bigger criminal are also going to be smaller level criminals. So in that context, that's why prosecutors get convictions all the time on these business people and in white collar and in uh, in um, in other criminal cases, white collar cases and non white collar cases. There are many different types of cases. Uh, white collar cases are just one of them. But wh whatever case it is. Prosecutors all the time use small small fish to bring down big fish by giving them immunity and having them testify. In this case, Michael Cohen's not getting immunity, but nevertheless, he's being subpoenaed to testify here. He has already received a subpoena in this case, and he will be showing up to testify. And given the facts here, given the paper evidence, the paperwork, the financial documents that the prosecutors have, that Alvin Bragg has, the jury will listen to their arguments and they will be receptive. Now, it is possible that the jury thinks that Michael Cohen is a, a, a sneaky crook himself and they don't believe him. OK, that can hurt the prosecution. That's why it's not a 100 percent slam dunk case, as I have said, the other cases are. OK, the documents case is straightforward. The D.C. case is even more straightforward. I would say the Florida case is at ninety nine point nine percent in D.C. with the 
January 6th case, it's a 100% conviction rate. As soon as he gets in front of a jury, he's going to prison. He's going to be convicted. Here, I put it at about 97, 98%. Okay, still high, but there's more chance for Trump to in introduce doubt because of the fact of Michael Cohen existing here and trying to poke holes in his uh, in his uh, arguments and to destroy try to destroy his credibility and, and messy him up in the eyes of the jury so the jury doesn't see him as see him as a good witness and therefore holds that against the government that can happen here okay so Alvin Bragg has a small chance of losing here but uh, and that's just a you know real world legal uh, breakdown there. It doesn't matter what we want. I'm telling you what's likely to happen based on the evidence. There is a chance that we don't get him in this case. Small chance. Like I said, 97, 98% chance is we're going to get a conviction here. But there is a small chance that they don't they don't find the government's uh, key witness, Michael Cohen, credible. And therefore, the jury rules that there isn't enough evidence to find him guilty. But again, there are documents here. But the documents have to be backed up by good witnesses. The documents alone are not enough to get a conviction. Okay, In this case, I would say but they're strong they're strong as well okay they're strong as well but the the trump side will try, try to argue that it was michael cohen who did everything and trump had nothing to do with it and if the if the jury buys that and thinks that the documents were produced by michael cohen then you can see a scenario where they don't uh, convict Trump. But that's a small, very, very small scenario. The prosecutors will have a lot to say, and they'll have a lot more witnesses than Donald Trump. I believe the Donald Trump side has like one witness. I don't even think that Donald Trump will be testifying. Uh, from what we know so far, they only have one witness on the record that they're going to put on. So it's not going to be a six-week trial. It's most likely going to be like a two- or three-week trial, uh, depending on how many witnesses that the government puts on. But um, it should be a relatively short trial. It should be over in a month, okay? And we'll get will have him convicted or not on this uh, in about a month. I feel confident that Alvin Bragg's office uh, can make a decent argument here. I don't know if Alvin Bragg himself will be in court. Uh, hopefully he is because he's a good uh, he's a good speaker from what I've seen and he can make a convic convict convincing argument uh, in this case. Uh, and Blanche, if he's going to be arguing, he's not going to be convincing at all. all. All these people are very highly paid lawyers, but they suck. Okay, That's what I've noticed in all these uh, defense uh, cases. They're not that convincing, Donald Trump's lawyers. They can't even convince a judge in any of the arguments that they've made. So that that's partially because their arguments are horrible. But nevertheless, uh, I expect better from these uh, highly paid law firms, but apparently they're not that good. But Anyways, that's all I got to say for right now. I've talked way too long already. Uh, I'll be making more videos as the trial draws close, closer. But that's all I got to say for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, if you haven't done so already, make sure to subscribe, hit the bell, and like the video uh, so you can get uh, updates on my videos. Liking the video and watching to the end is the best way to help the channel. And if you want to help the channel even more, you can do so on Patreon over here. Watch my last video over here. I'll see you guys in my next video, as always.